Well, it's always good to, to win a rivalry game. Uh, that was uh, great for our kids, the kids in our program, the kids uh, from Kansas. Um, and, you know, they, they, our team played really hard. And um, uh, like I said, it, it was a great win for us. Uh, but one one thing that coaches stressed and we have stressed as uh, as a staff is the importance of understanding that uh, every win is is a great win, and that each week you know we have to prepare ourselves uh, to celebrate in the locker room where you have to pay the price on on Sunday on Monday uh, throughout the week and to continue to stack the days and uh, feel like that you know offensively, defensively, and special teams, we've continued to get better week after week. And I think that, uh, you know, as we, as we continue in the, uh, in the Big 12, we're going to have to do that. Playing a lot of young guys defensively and offensively, of course. And uh, as, as um, you know, you put more young guys out on the field, you have a chance to make, you know, mistakes. Um, but the great thing for us is that, you know, we're not seeing as many mistakes, you know, that as many mistakes as we had in week one. We're not seeing those. And that's refreshing as a staff. So um, uh, we're going to have to continue this progression. This week will be important uh, because we will face a, a tough opponent at home. And those guys have played extremely hard throughout the season as we've watched them. Uh, they've lost some close games. Uh, they're playing young players as well. So uh, it'll be a big challenge for us. Uh, as as we roll into this week. Okay, we'll start here with Kellis. Hey, Van, you guys have uh, pulled off pick six interceptions in back-to-back -back games as a defensive coach yourself. What what all goes into that? What's the key of having those big plays? Well, coaches always say you you get what you emphasize, and you know we talked about attacking the ball in the air. We've talked about creating turnovers throughout the season. And that's something that since we've been here, that's something that as a staff, we've uh, continued to stress, continue to emphasize. So it's good to see when guys uh, go up and get the football, but the, the ability to be able to get it into the end zone, you know, that's another step. And uh, so it's exciting to see defensive backs, you know, AJ and Justin, those guys have the opportunity to, to score with the football. Uh, because that's, again, something on defense that we stress is that uh, it's our position, it's our uh, job to get the ball back to the offense and to put it in scoring position as best as we can. There's not a lot of defensive guys who have that ability. So we're excited when we have the opportunity to put it in the end zone uh, as defensive backs. Uh, Chris mentioned the other day he's found himself spending a lot more time on special teams coaching than he did when he was at North Dakota State. Has it been the same for you and other members of the staff that there's just a lot more emphasis being put on it this year? Well, the, the fact is, is that each one of our coaches has, a, has an assignment on the special teams and everyone is, is involved. Uh, I think it's important that our players see that, that they recognize the importance of special teams. You get one play to be special. And we've had some some units to go out there, specifically the punt return unit, and and make big plays for our team. And as we go through the season, seeing that these games will continually be close, uh, we feel like that that that's our edge is us uh, having and making plays on special teams to give our team an opportunity to win. I also wanted to ask, from your perspective, how beneficial can it be to have guys like Byron Pringle and Tyler Lockett? tearing it up in the NFL right now with recruiting, with guys you're coaching, just everything. How much does that or can that help? Well, they all, you know, they all dream of, of one day playing in the NFL. And if they can see that that path can flow from Kansas State to the NFL, I think that's encouraging for not only recruits, but for our current players. And it's, it's great to see guys who have sat in the same seats that, that you sit in and who are performing and having success in the NFL. So our guys, they get into it and they're proud. Uh, so it, it's, I think it's a great thing for us all around as a program. John? Yeah, Van, I wanted to follow up a little bit on the, the special teams question there. At, at different stops that you've been at, how much variance is there between school to school, staff to staff, as to how much emphasis is put on special teams in your experience? 
Well, you know, I, I've been blessed to, to be on quite a few staffs that have put emphasis on special teams. But, you know, here at Kansas State, the fact that we've had so much success over the years on special teams, it's, it's a little bit different uh, because I think other staffs recognize the importance, you know, that, that special teams is a third of the game. But, uh, you know, our players, they take great pride in it. They understand it. Our coaches as well, understanding the great responsibility, the great history of special teams here at Kansas State. So I think it, it kind of feeds off itself. And our players and our coaches, are uh, we take a great, great deal of pride in, in being successful on special teams. And as we've seen throughout this season, it's, uh, it's a big part of the game. And it has allowed us to be successful so far. And how valuable is Stanton Weber in that regard and what he does for you guys on special teams? Well, Stanton and his behind the scenes work, uh, again, he's, he's a player, a former player who's been on this team and been a part of the great success on special teams. And so, you know, we, we couldn't do many of the things that we do without Stanton and his work behind the scenes. He does a great job of uh, digging out tips and uh, helping us as coaches to be able to find things to um, uh, give to our players, coming up with the plans and uh, uh, critiquing uh, opponents, scouting the opponents. And that's been, that's been big time important for us as we've gone through the season. Appreciate it, Van. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Greg. Hello, Coach. Um, I'm wondering, among your um, long-distance players, like from Georgia or wherever, uh, have some of them been around ever since summer conditioning? Yeah, most of, mo most of our team has, has been in the area. The ones who chose to stay in the area doing, during the, uh, the lockdown, uh, they they, they uh, hung in here and, you know, of course, we couldn't meet with them, couldn't see them. Uh, but then there are other guys who did who did go home. And uh, we're just glad to have them back here and uh, locked in for the rest of this season. For those that you say hung in there, have you found that there was an extra dimension of coaching that you – had to go through in order to get them to persevere because of all the things that were going on early in the season? I think, I think that question would, would, would uh, you know, be true for, for our entire team. Uh, this has been a different season. This has been a different, different season and week to week and day to day even, there's challenges that our players face. You know, when, when we talk about the COVID testing continually, and then the close contacts, you know, there's a certain sense that, that, you know, you're always on the edge because you just don't know what tomorrow will bring. But I think our players and our, our coaches, our support staff have done a great job of, of circling the wagons in that way and of, um, you know, dealing with uh, issues that have surrounded that anxiety and being supportive of, of each other. Uh, I think that, you know, we have a team that, that works hard on and off the field. We have a team that is locked in on, on doing the things that it takes to prepare to be successful. So the time that we were away, you know, these guys were working. They were, they were if, if I couldn't lift Coach Dawson's weights, then I had to lift milk carts. If I couldn't run on the football field, then I had to go to the park. And so – uh, that we did a good job, I think, as a staff of staying connected with them. They did a good job of, of remaining connected with each other. So I don't think we had as many issues as, uh, as, as you would think. But there was and still is a, a level of anxiety that, you know, that, that our players have to deal with. But it's, it's been good to see them uh, week to week lock into what's going on on the football field. And, and it's kind of been a next man up mentality. So um, with all that's going on, I'm proud of, of where our team has, has grown to be. One more question. Was it more difficult for those who are a long way from home, especially if they had to go into isolation uh, because of the protocols, not necessarily because they were sick or something, but because of tracing, they had to follow it and they're isolated all of a sudden. 
Yeah, there's there's been a guy, a couple guys who have who have had to follow down that path, and you know, there's there's a high level of uh, anxiety and and maybe even depression. You know, when you when you when you have to isolate yourself from your teammates, and and I think that you know uh, our our support staff has done a great job of staying connected with those players however we can in terms of zooming them in terms of getting on the phone checking on guys uh just to make sure that you, that they're okay and our guys have have withstood quite a bit in that way and and I'm talking to the players who who have had to isolate for for whatever reason uh and guys who uh who are, who are here in Manhattan and and they didn't grow up in Kansas and, you know, or from Georgia or from Texas or from other different places around the country. I think that, you know, we've done a great job as a team of, of uh, embracing those players and supporting them throughout whatever difficult times they've had to go through. Thank you, coach. That's Hey coach. Um, how is Van Malone's day-to-day duties changed with the, uh, new fancy title of associate head coach? Well, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to, to to be and coach a lot of different places. And as an assistant coach, you don't, you don't get to see many of the things that the head coach uh, deals with. And, and I think the head coach does that on purpose so that you can focus in on your details, the details of your job, your specific group. Uh, but I've had the opportunity to see some of the things that Coach Kleiman uh, deals with on a day-to-day basis as a head coach. And so that's why I keep my hair cut short so that you don't see the gray hairs uh, as they, as they uh, grow. Uh, but no, it's, it's been a lot of fun uh, because having the opportunity to meet with players, having the opportunity to help him uh, um, coordinate and plan for things that um, or, or the big picture things for our team that has been a great learning process for me. And, and I, I tell him all the time, you know, I thank him all the time for giving me this opportunity because it has been uh, a, a great learning process, but, you know, I, I say it all the time and I think our staff says it uh, and our players say it, that it's my job to, to make coach Kleiman the best coach uh, in the country. And, and, and I think the rest of the staff feels the same way. I would say the same thing about Joe Clanderman. and it's my job to, to help him be the best defensive coordinator that he can be. And, uh, and our players, again, uh, as, as they have great care and concern for coach, all our coaches, but for coach Kleiman specifically, would say the same thing that they do what they do so that everyone will know that we have the best co- head coach in the country. Does Van Malone want to be a head coach someday? Of course. Yes, and, and he will. <laughs> I love it. Take me through that Justin Gardner uh, interception uh, as his position coach. Uh, how did you see that develop? And did you see it kind of all ahead of schedule when it, before it happened? Well, I, I normally can predict the future. So, uh, <laughs> no, it, it was a play that, uh, that, that we had Justin off in, in the zone coverage. And, and we stress in zone coverage that you have the ability to be able to see a lot of things, which we don't when we're playing man-to-man. And so Justin uh, was off in zone coverage and was able to see the play develop. And, you know, when, when you are in that position and you get to see the play develop, it's important that as a defensive back, especially that you take uh, advantage of the opportunity to make a play. And so he saw the play develop. Uh, he saw the running back start to, to ease out of the backfield uh, to, to set up a screen play. Well, uh, at that point, he understands that there's an offensive lineman who would come out to block him to ensure that the, the, that the back escapes freely. Uh, so he knew that he had to beat the block of that offensive lineman. And then, you know, from there, it's about um, catching the ball and then taking the 15 steps that he had to take to get it into the end zone. So I, I, I think that, you know, that is, is a, a measure of jo- uh, Justin's improvement in the defense, understanding the play, uh, taking a good look at his keys, and then and, and attacking, the, um, attacking the opportunity to intercept the ball. How impressed are you with Gardner and Boydo's progress in a short period of time? 
Well, you know, those guys have, I always say that they work extremely hard and they've worked themselves into this position. So as their coach, I'm, I'm excited. I'm not only excited about them, you know, yes, they play uh, probably pay, play the most, but uh, there's other guys in that room from T. Denson to Cam Key to Keandre Thomas. Those guys work just as hard. Those guys, in my opinion, are, are coming together as a group and uh, Echo and Justin, happen to be the guys out on the field and happen to be really doing a good job now making plays. But I'm excited about the fact that when we put other guys into the game, the drop off of play is, is very minimal. And I'm, I'm excited for that for now and into the future. Thanks coach. Yeah, we got three hands raised. We'll go right down the row, starting here with Kels. Thinking back to last year, how much did West Virginia playing Jared Daigie in that game kind of throw you guys off, or what kind of impact did that have? Well, him, him coming into the game last year, it was a uh, it, it was a difference, you know. But you know, the thing that's really impressive about him is that he's a competitive he's a competitive kid. As you watch him into this season, he's he's definitely improved, and and I would say that he's the he's the thing that makes them go. Uh, he has a pretty good arm. He's active with his feet, doesn't get sacked much. And so he'll be a challenge for us. Uh, but but uh, speaking to last year, uh, it was, a, it was it, it did throw us a little bit. Uh, but, you know, at this point, uh, like I said, from what we've seen from him so far, uh, he, he'll be, a, he'll be a, an extreme challenge for us. What, what else stands out to you about their, their offense? Anything, anything big? Well, they have uh, – Really good offensive line, and they play together. They play together well as a group. Uh, the running backs, both guys that that play the, uh, that play a lot right now, or uh, they're they're powerful, strong runners. They have good speed. You've seen them uh, have a couple of breakaway runs. So we have to do a good job of wrapping up and tackling those guys well. The receiving core probably will be amongst the best that we play. But you say that week after week in the Big Twelve, uh, they have guys who are explosive. Uh, they they use them di in different places on the field, uh, but when they and they get the balls in their hands, they uh, you know you have to do a good job of of uh, defending the perimeter with them, uh, as well as uh, vertically uh, defending them because they have the ability to stretch the field. So uh, from their skill position standpoint, uh, it'll be a challenge for us. And uh, defensively, those are the things that we'll continue to harp to our players as we go through the week. Brian. Hey, Van, how you doing today? Doing all right. Hey, good. Uh, take, with, with Justin, can you kind of take me back through his recruitment and maybe what was it that initially drew you guys to him when you were there on the recruiting trail? Well, we feel like, you know, to do the things we do defensively, you have to have uh, good cornerbacks. You have to have guys who have the ability to be able to play man to man. And, you know, honestly, that starts with length. And that starts with speed. And so those are the two things that immediately drew us to Justin is the fact that he's a taller corner. And the fact that, you know, he has pretty good athletic ability. He can run. Uh, and, and so those are the things that you see, you know, just in the numbers. But then when you have the opportunity to, to be around him, you have an opportunity to uh, find out what makes him tick, uh, understand how hard he works to be, uh, you know, the best player that he can be, then, you know, you are even more intrigued by him. He doesn't talk a lot, right? And so in recruiting, when you deal with players who, who will tell you that they're the best thing since sliced bread, uh, you know, sometimes that can be a turnoff, but sometimes that can be intriguing, inviting for a coach even. But uh, that's not who he is. That's not who he's been. He's just a kid who, who goes to work every day, uh, who, who plays hard, uh, and who's, who's a good teammate. And those are the things that, that we really needed in that room. So I'm excited to have him here. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching him continually progress in his defense and to progress as a player. Van, I know in the past, you know, you, you've told me that you, you know, you grade pretty, pretty harshly with your players. So uh, how many times this week are they going to see that 50-yard touchdown that was the game-winning play last year? Well, I think – well, I think that, you know, what you have to do is, is you have to let the pass be the pass. Uh, you know, even, even 
And that's what my players would tell me. Uh, even as we, as we um, look back to, to make sure that we don't uh, commit the same errors, that we don't make the same mistakes. I think we have a much more mature football team, have a much more mature secondary. And, and that was a part of the learning process. You know, you would hope that you don't learn things and, and lose a game uh, in the process. But uh, when, you, when you move ahead a year later, then you're excited that you had the opportunity to learn from, uh, you know, certain things on the field. So, no, it won't be on loop. But uh, besides, we have a whole lot of other mistakes that we got to get corrected. Uh, but uh, I think that that play was definitely one that, that we've learned from. Mm -hmm. Last one here, John. Yeah, Van, was just going to check. Are, are you anticipating having AJ available for the game on Saturday right now? Well, he is uh, continuing to progress. And, you know, we got good news the other day. And so we are, uh, with the medical staff, just continuing to uh, keep him going through the process. Uh, he as well is, is one of those guys who uh, it, it kills him to miss a rep, you know, so – uh, we look we look forward to be uh, for us to continue to get good news uh, because uh, you know he's he's progressing he's getting better day after day and so we'll just see on Saturday.